Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Tuesday, May 29th, 2012, and here's just a sneak peek at what we have coming up. Tonight. A lot of innocent, dead civilians, uh, little children, mamas, daddies, and to go to bed each night with that blood on your hands, must I don't see how they can do it. Except the Bilderberg rationale for wars is we need the population control. They're now yelling that we'll run out of Earth in 30 years. We've got to control the population. One way to control the population is for young men to die in wars. An InfoWars exclusive interview with Bilderberg investigator Jim Tucker. Then, TSA Viper teams are now patrolling music festivals as the federal government is hell-bent on keeping America safe from the dangerous terrorist. Plus, it's escape from New York, as the high-taxing empire loses 3.4 million residents in 10 years. And drones are shot down over Texas in another explosive and exciting episode of Prison Planet TV's Brothers in Arms. All that plus full-spectrum coverage of Bilderberg 2012 from Chantilly, Virginia. Up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And you know what our top story is going to be. It's Bilderberg 2012 Chantilly 3.0. That's where we're going to go fight the globalists. And right now, as we speak, Alex Jones... Aaron Dykes, Rob Jacobson, and Richard the Driver are heading up there, and they're going to be kicking some globalist butt. You know, this is where we have to go. This is where we have to make our stand. So if you're watching this or you're listening to my voice right now, get out there to Chantilly, and let's show them that we know where the power brokers are. Check out Paul Joseph Watson's article, Alex Jones banned from Bilderberg Hotel calls for press mob. Contacted by Brian Stoll's director of hotel operations at Marriott International, Jones was told his room booking was canceled and that he and his crew would be banned from entering the premises. Why? Because they want to expose the global elite. Isn't that crazy? That's the way it is, though, in this world, because we don't really believe the Bilderberg exists unless MSNBC or CNN says it. And for that, Jones has called for a press mob. So if you're listening to this, get out there now and let's show people who the globalists are and let's unmask these cretins. Now, if you want to know what's going on during Bilderberg, we have a whole page up. It's called Live Video and News from Bilderberg 2012. It's right on InfoWars. It's going to be at the top of the features. We've got our Justin TV stream. We've got our Ustream, which I was just watching. The guys were getting fired up. In fact, play that right now. Play that Ustream. See what happens. I mean, the guys are literally driving to Chantilly, and they're fired up. I don't even know if we could play some of the some of the audio over the air. There's our Justin TV link. We have our YouTube channel. It's all there. All the information is going to be coming out as live as we can get it. So you need to get on there. Uh, send that link out to your friends and family if you haven't done so yet, and let's expose these people because that's what it's all about. Now we're getting on to our other top story. How Fukushima may show up in your sushi. That's right. Radioactive sushi is coming your way. And it says here, researchers tested 15 Pacific bluefin tuna that had migrated from Japan to California coast and found out that the levels of radioactive cesium in these fish were 10 times higher than those found in bluefin tuna from years before the disaster. So what does that mean? It means they're going to raise the level of radioactive cesium that's allowed in your tuna fish. That's what they're going to say. It's okay. We're just going to raise the level that once was uh, deadly and once was going to cause cancer. Now that's the safe level, and that's the way it is in America. So button up and shut up. Here we go. On to drone news. We've got a lot of drone news today. 17-year-old girl included on Obama's secret kill list. And this is from Paul Joseph Watson. President Barack Obama's unconstitutional secret kill list includes a 17-year-old girl along with several American citizens, according to a New York Times report. It says here, one of the targets in Yemen is a girl who looked even younger than her 17 years, and several were Americans. 
And it takes you also back, that New York Times article takes you back to a CBS interview. Actually, Paul Joseph Watson uh, refers to a CBS interview in January where Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta revealed that Obama himself personally approves the policy to kill American citizens suspected of terrorism without trial. So you could be killed just being suspected of being a terrorist. Wow, they could kill you, they could kill me just by saying, well, we think he's a terrorist. He's, he's talking like he doesn't like what's going on out there. So maybe he should become a terrorist. Barack Obama has declared that a 17-year-old girl is to be gunned down if American spies can find her. And what does that mean? Drones. And so what have we done? Well, we've gone out and made a political statement with a little bit of firearms. And it's called Drones Shot Down Over Texas. It's a YouTube that we put up. And it's part of our Brothers in Arms series that we're producing here at InfoWars that uh, Alex Jones is the brainchild behind. Again, with him, a couple of the Steiner boys, and, um, and then another professional firearms instru instructor named Matt. So the second installment, it was a drone shot down over Texas. This was very fun to shoot. I was on the shoot. Uh, we shot some Tannerite, shot a helicopter, shot some drones, shot a little remote control vehicle. Uh, basically shot anything that wasn't, uh, you know, that was explosive. It was, it was very fun. So following columnist Charles Krauthammer's observation that the first, fir first person to shoot down a surveillance drone on U.S. soil would be a folk hero, gun enthusiasts in Texas have done precisely that as they protest against the use of spy drones on the American people. So I'm going to show you a segment of this. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but you can go to that article, Drone Shot Down Over Texas, and it has the actual link to the video. Spread that video around. Let's become our own folk heroes, and, you know, if we do see those drones, I don't know. We need to politically shoot them down before they get up in the air. That's for damn sure. And so here we go. Here's a quick, a quick sneak peek at Drones Shot Down Over America. Recently, the federal government has announced that 30,000 drones are to be deployed in the skies of America. And I would predict, I'm not encouraging, but I'm predicting the first guy who uses a Second Amendment weapon to bring a drone down that's been hovering over his house is going to be a folk hero in this country. Every level of government is in a feverish race to procure and launch drones. Within weeks of the federal government announcing that more than 30,000 surveillance drones will be launched against the American people, the establishment continued to push the envelope, telling the public weaponized drones were next. So we returned to Steiner Ranch to shoot down a few drones of our own. So that was just a sneak peek of the second installment of Brothers in Arms. We also have a link at the end back to the first episode. If you missed that one, we're going to be producing a lot more of these. They're a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to edit. I mean, you know, it's really cool to put the Second Amendment into action because we all need to defend it and we all need to be aware of it. And, um, well, upon playing this today, I also ran across this story. Virginia Governor, warrantless drones great for America. Yeah, that's right. Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell epitomizes the current crop of American politicians that know nothing about the Constitution and the proper role of government envisioned by Thomas Jefferson and the Founders. McDonald has jumped on the drone craze bandwagon. Of course he would. He's part of the Council of Governors, handpicked by Obama. He said it's great on a radio program. If you're keeping police officers safe and making it more productive and saving money, it's absolutely the right thing to do. 
well, it's not going to be saving any money. And we all know that this is going to be one of those things that they just tack onto the budget and keep expanding it and making it larger and larger and larger. And now there's going to be a whole drone force out there patrolling every event, looking at everybody, seeing what they're doing, reporting on suspected terrorists. And next thing you know, well, we have to put missiles on them. Well, no, first it'll be tasers, and then it's going to be missiles. And we all know where that's going to go. Just look at Iraq, look at Afghanistan, look at Yemen, where they want to kill a 17-year-old girl. So it's great for America. But don't worry, we now have TSA Viper teams patrolling music festivals. John Corbett, who's been on the show a couple times, we're going to try to get him on again tomorrow, points out, and this is from a Steve Watson article, TSA Viper teams and, and CBP agents spotted patrolling music festival. And this is a uh, music festival in Detroit. And Corbett asked the agents, you know, um, you know why they were there. And, and they said, well, maybe the Detroit police are a little short-staffed. Yeah, because the city's falling apart. But when he followed up and asked them if they were part of a Viper team, they perked up a bit. And because uh, he knew it, <laughs> he was, <laughs> they were surprised to see that a public, uh, a member of the public knew what they were up to. And upon entering the festival, he then spotted and snapped pictures of several uniformed border patrol agents. When asked what they were doing, they said they were in 50 miles of the border and they can patrol anywhere they want to. And they can enforce both federal and state laws. Okay. So we have a music festival. It was called the Electronic Music Festival. I think that was the name of it. It doesn't actually say here. It says the Happy Go Lucky Electronic Music Festival goers. Anyway, so you have a music festival with about 10,000 people. Of course, we have to have TSA there and Border Patrol. And you, and you notice how he says, well, it's 50 miles within the border, so we get to go anywhere and do whatever we want. All we need to be is 50 miles within the border. We've seen Alex Jones confront the Border Patrol, and it was way more than 50 miles in, in Texas on his way back from South Padre Island with his family. Total disgrace, but they set that up, and they want to check you and ask for your papers and where you're going and what you're doing. But then you ask them some questions, oh, and they don't want to answer any. They, don't, they never want to answer any questions. And this brings me back... Over this weekend, I went to a festival. It was uh, over the weekend, about 2,500 people. We didn't have one cop inside the festival. There were two sheriff's deputies parked outside, and they stayed there. And you know why? Because everybody who entered the festival signed a little contract, and they took personal responsibility for their actions. You know what personal responsibility is? That means you're responsible for your behavior. You don't need a cop there patrolling around, asking questions, trying to get people arrested. You're responsible. If you get too drunk, it's your fault, okay? If you take some drugs, it's your fault. If you get out of hand and start beating people up, it's your fault. Of course, there's people there to help, and they're called rangers, and they do a very good job at conflict resolution. So that's what we need. We need festivals without police because we don't need police there inspecting everybody's good time, making sure everybody's doing everything the right way. It's totally ridiculous. I want to go back to John uh, Corbett's blog. It's TSA Out of Our Pants. This is kind of a, in fact, it was called Detroit's Electronic Music Festival. There it is. And there's a picture of the Border Patrol agent. You know, uh, we can see he's obviously doing a good job gawking at the young girls. Here's the quote. Yes, you can add to the list the following terrorist-rich environment of Detroit's Electronic Music Festival, D-E-M-F, or movement. As electronic produ music producer myself, in between sessions of suing and embarrassing the TSA in my day job, I find a little time. I attend a large number of music festivals across the, across the globe each year, so you can imagine my surprise when I was wandering from the festival to my car when I ran into a group of five men who looked like police officers, but one of whom was wearing a bulletproof vest with the large letters TSA. Upon closer inspection, all of the men were DHS employees and at least two were armed, law enforcement officers. Yes, TSA has armed law enforcement officers, but don't confuse these guys with the guys confiscating your toothpaste in all airports, all of which are not actually law enforcement. So there you go. That's what it's like to go into a music festival in America. Pretty soon they're going to be groping you on your way in. Why? Because we've decided we don't need personal responsibility. We're going to put our responsibility for our safety over to a bunch of pot belly pedophiles. That's where we're at. Let's move on to those zuckers out there. Stocks end higher, but Spain weighs and Facebook sags 9%. Uh, Facebook shares have tumbled sharply like we predicted they would because it looks, and now it appears to be a pump and dump. Now they're almost $10 below from where they were. They're at $29 a share, or uh, let's see, over 20% off its value since its May 18th debut. And European shares closed higher, but worries over the Spanish banks kept a damper on gains. 
So they lost, they went their credit rating from B to BB minus with a negative watch. So that doesn't bode well. And, and we all know Spain is the next, uh, they're going to be the next country on the list after Greece, and then it's Portugal, and, and then it's going to be the rest of Europe. And once it happens to England, we're not too far away. So just get prepared if you're not prepared out there. All those of you laughing at us who are telling you to get prepared with food and water and shelter and firearms, don't laugh because it's going to happen. Moving on, we got a video here uh, that Alex Jones produced, if you haven't seen it, Bono's Secret, Front Man for Genocide. So we're going to go to this video. It's about 11 minutes long, and him and Aaron Dykes and Rob Jacobson break down Bono, who's from the lead singer of YouTube, if you're not aware of that, and how he's got these foundations, but they, they get a lot of money, but they don't really invest that much money into helping people. Most of it they keep for themselves, and that which, which they do invest is basically for eugenics operations. So here's that video, and we'll be right back. We have now just entered into Virginia to cover Bilderberg 2012 and from the Mobile InfoWars command post defending the Republic from the globalist and the private corporate takeover taking place. We are going to be covering some news here for you ahead of the live radio show tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern. Aaron Dykes, uh, one of the co-hosts of InfoWars Nightly News, is here with me. We were just talking about Bono of U2 and how it's confirmed that he has gotten hundreds of millions of dollars from people uh, giving money to charity, believing it's helping little starving black children. But he's also gotten money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which he admits is the majority of his money. Now, this has been known for years that 1% or less, it varies year to year, one year 1.3, one year you know, 0.9, but around 1%, I guess that's why one of his charities is called 1%, the other, they hit that whole red campaign because it is 1%. Now, the other issue here is, on the other side of that, he promotes carbon taxes that they admit uh, from the UN's own numbers would kill about a billion people over the next decade if they put them in, in Latin America, Africa, and other areas. In fact, it's already killing people. We've got some articles on that. You pulled that up, right? The InfoWars article that linked yeah. over to... Uh, all right, well, we'll show that last. The point is, we've got a bunch of tabs here we want to show you. Rob Jacobson's on camera. Uh, Aaron, get people an overview of what you're about to cover, that Rob's going to come around and show people what we're doing here, what we're looking at. I mean, the amount of evidence we spent hours just pouring over this. And sure, we've covered it before, but it's hiding in plain view. Bono is supporting a program of eugenics that will kill hundreds of millions of people, if not billions conservatively. He's a Bill and Melinda Gates front. He's involved in all this eugenics stuff, but he's the rocker with the red sunglasses. And had the other guy part of Bill and Melinda Gates, you know, he heads up the big banks, get the biggest bank bailouts, but he wants taxes raised, so your money goes to him. Warren Buffett, always posing with an ice cream cone, non-threatening, non-threatening rocker front guy, non-threatening Bill and Melinda Gates, paying ABC News and hundreds of other publications to cast him as a superhero. They think you're idiots, okay? Now, I know you're awake, but it's time to wake up the other people. We gotta beat these crooks. Come on around here. Well, Aaron, give us a brief synopsis, and then Rob's gonna come around. Yeah, you two's the ultimate front man, not just for the band he's in, but for the global agenda. And they rope all these celebrities together, moralize to you about how you have to save Africa, but once you study the details, you can never unlearn that it's a eugenics kill operation, and of course to control the economic resources of third world places, Africa, Latin America, you name it. And see, if he just said, hey, there's too many black people, Hispanics, Asians, let's just kill them, I would still be against him. But I'd be like, well, he's being honest. But see, they learned because of Hitler that you don't just come right out and say it and wear a uniform. You go, hey, I got an ice cream cone. I'm an old man. Hey, I'm Bono. You too, baby. But the thing is, they tell the public to invest their money in this and that they're doing something good and saving lives. But it isn't. A, it's part of eugenics. B, the money doesn't even go to the That's what's programs. sick. Is it's a cover for a eugenics program as they try to turn off development to Latin America, Asia, and Africa that would actually lower their population like the West. Once you're industrialized, you have an average of 1.3 children per two parents. It's just totally cold-blooded, but it's the Royal Commission's policy of 1949 that all this is based on. State Department Memorandum 200, 1979, uh, no, 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 1973, Henry Kissinger. All of this 
is right there. This is a program of deindustrialization. Aaron, continue. Yeah, and uh, similarly, U2's Red campaign also told people they'd be saving HIV victims fighting the AIDS epidemic, but in reality, they were telling people to buy into Red campaign merchandising. All the biggest companies from America and the, and the globe, but the money given was only about 18 million. Really, it was just getting people to buy their products believing they're doing something good. And again, Warren Buffett, Bill and Melinda Gates, all these big globalists, they all give money to eugenics, but you've got to drill down to find that out. Their tens of millions are made tax-free, and so now, instead of paying 30 40% taxes, they're all tax-free, and then just the profit is used to carry out their pet project, World Government, which is a status takeover for corporate welfare and control of resources. Come around here uh, on the RV as we hurtle down the road at 75 miles an hour with Richard Reeves driving. Come around here, Rob, and show folks uh, uh, the, the uh, different exhibits. Uh, Jacobson, do you have any comments on how sick this is? I think it's uh, totally treacherous. I mean, the fact of the matter is that these, these people, I mean, I can't even put into words how evil this is. I mean, for one thing, what is Bono doing floating around with these globalists on the one hand, and on the other hand, pretending to be some activist for peace and African children and starving this and... And at the other, and on the other side, he's hanging out with some of the top eugenicists, some of the most worst global trash, you know, around. And again, he says he's saving the world and lectures to all of us about don't take a hot bath, don't go on a vacation, your carbon dioxide plants breathe is evil. Now, 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 tell folks about this. A little over one percent. So the foundation is under fire for only giving one percent of its funds to charity, and they play it off and explain, well, we're basically promoting the idea of saving people instead of actually giving money to programs. But then you look at the last paragraph of the article. One said it took no money from the public, that most of its funds came from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let's turn that phrase around. They're admitting they're just a front for the Bill and Melinda Gates Pro Foundation. And he admits he wants folks. carbon taxes that are right at double what's on the West, totally destroying these countries. And here's one of the cap -and trade articles. Oh, but he's... He's a good guy. He's Planet. teaching us lessons. Do as I do, not as I say. And all of his lavish spending, all of his carbon, all of his jets, his dozens of houses, but little old ladies are bad. And show him this one. Costly red campaign reaps meager $18 million. And here's just a few of the products, American Express, different types of phones and technologies that they sold to people on the premise they were going to be saving lives in Africa. And then that's why it was only $18 because it's 1%. It was, it was all just a gimmick. Well, to be clear, these are two separate but sure. related charities. Sure, but, yeah. sure, but he does the same thing on every front. But, right, continue. but that's not all. We look back at the... Oh, he's Jesus. Go back to the Jesus article. This is some of the coverage. Oh, the he's traveling the world. He's oh. the Jesus of the poor. Oh, my God. He wants and, to cut... It's a religion article. Your religion is Bono and, and worshiping the globalists. And, and carbon tax. They're going to tax you more for less, more for your water, more for your oil. Not to help the earth, but because they want a post-industrial world. You won't be so uppity. But, but look at this. In the first paragraph here, it mentions Elevation Partners, which it was widely publicized, were part of the... Blackstone. Big they're part of the big Facebook IPO that happened last Friday. Bono, again, is the front man, but let's look Which at you said, and we said weeks before, was a big pump and dump scam to rip everybody off. Now admit it, but they spent it like he lost money. He actually made one plus billion. The writing is on the wall. Here's Elevation Partners. Bono is the true front man. You got two Apple people in the firm. The other two are leveraged buyout derivative monster ripping devouring companies. Blackstone with representation of Bilderberg. They're and the Silver ones Lake. gobbling up the pension funds. The other is Silver Lake. They work together with groups like KKR. Buddies uh, liberal. KKR, Bain Capital, and others. They all work together to buy out pension funds, to buy out companies. You name it. And then loot them, then hyperinflate the currency and pay it back with devalued dollars. But look what happened with the Facebook pump and dump scam. On May 18th, the day of the Facebook IPO, there was the kind of bad press that Bono was about to become the richest rocker that his uh, elevation firm was going to pick up $1.5 or more. But look how they spun it a week later. There's all these articles about how... Yeah, Bono's because people now know it was a pump-and-dump criminal scam and that they were all selling right at the start and right before making Martha Stewart look like an angel. It's all about how he lost $342 million, but really, given the numbers, 
Oh, they always hide it in the same article, London. But really, they picked up $1.84 billion because some little birdie told them to invest $90 million back in 2009. And instead of 20 steps forward with $2.9 billion, they reported on the three steps back that put them down to only $1.8 billion. And again, they know there's class warfare. He's the one always saying raise taxes on people because through government welfare and banker bailouts, like with Buffett, he gets the money. But then they want they know to say, oh, don't worry, he lost too, so it's okay. It's all psych warfare. They give you the number of the three steps back, not 20 steps forward. So they say, oh, I'm not richer than the Beatles' Paul McCartney. I'm just a lowly YouTuber. But look what he else, says that. He says that. Look what else they hide in the article. He added, in elevation, we invest other people's money, endowments, pension funds. We do get paid, of course, but you know, blah, blah, blah. And again, that would be okay if it was free market. These guys want a monopoly, a Gen 21 post industrial system where they shut us down. Back to Elevation Partners, we told you about Blackstone and Silver Lake. Last week, it was a big debate because a lot of Obama's Democrats tr want to attack Romney on the Bain Capital issue, but a number of prominent Obama supporters, Cory Booker, the mayor in New Jersey, of course, said, no, no, we don't attack pension funds. Let's not go there. They own our pension funds. They own our state pension funds. They uh, Between Blackstone, KKR, Silver Lake, Bain, and the others, they bought out the pension funds in Texas, California, for teachers. But they love black people, they said. And here they are investing in things like Facebook, Pump and Dumb, and all kinds of other investments. What did, what did the head of Facebook call? Market. He called his, his users dumb effort. This is wrong, Alex. People have put money into these pensions for 20, 30, 40, 50 years expecting to have that money when they retire. And here they are trading it on the derivatives market, putting it into leveraged buyouts where they stack up the dominoes and prepare them to be tipped over. They well, really I mean, want to well, gut us. I mean, they've looted the, 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 the pension funds, the Social Security, you saw all of it. That's why they're getting the police state ready is to control us. Now, we're almost out of time on this video. Uh, I want to show you some more articles. Now, this is the London Telegraph. We also have Infowars.com. Killing Ugandans to save the planet. And, folks, if this is making you sick, I'm sorry. We're multitasking. Driving on the road to Bilderberg 2012. Hope to see you there. But this is killing Ugandans to save the planet. They actually run them out of their own property, kill them if they don't leave for carbon sinks. Just the excuse, take the property. This is also happening in Honduras. This is nothing but neo colonialism wrapped in a we're saving the earth. Yeah, and it's where the rubber meets the road with the eugenics and all these investment bankers who all centralize around Bilderberg, Blackstone, and these other firms I mentioned, and uh, Bill and Melinda Gates. No, they have course. a predatory, cannibalistic thing where they implode like vulture capitalism, not free market. It's all done as crony insider monopoly, so they're anti free market. And here he is again, lecturer on cap and trade. We showed you that. So there you have it. Alex Jones, Aaron Dykes, Rob Jacobson on their way to Bilderberg, still breaking down the globalist power game. <laughs> and I tell you, it's going to be nonstop from here. So be sure you check out our Bilderberg articles and whatnot. Another way to keep informed is if you become a member of Planet InfoWars. There it is. It's our beta test, but you can get on because you're a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. And there's a Bilderberg uh, InfoWars official group. You can get on and see all the updates from there. We're going to have video updates from uh, one of our own people here, one of the moderators. Um, and you can watch that video, Bilderberg Digging Their Own Graves from Alex Jones. Got a lot of stuff to prepare for you. And please become a member of Planet InfoWars. Become a member of Prison Planet TV. It's the way you support us. And uh, we'll be right back after this break with a few more stories and a special interview from Jim Tucker at last year's Bil Bilderberg in St. Moritz, Switzerland. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet 
and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Rob Dew, and here's a few more stories. This is from CBS uh, Local, and this is an update. Causeway Cannibal identified fears grow over drug possibility involved. And here we go. We got a little fear-mongering and disinformation. Um, the suspected cannibal has been identified by Ma Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner's office Officer as 31-year-old Rudy Eugene. Eugene may have been homeless at the time of the attack, and his last known address was northern Miami. And so they go on in this article to talk about bath salts, and they think bath salts was the cause for the crime because they're seeing a lot of this. And they immediately equate bath salts with LSD. And if you go look up what actually is in bath salts, which they aren't even really bath salts, they just call them that so they can sell them to you. And the druggies out there know it's really used for human consumption, though they buy it as bath salts. But anyway, it's made from uh, three possible uh, hallucinogens slash synthetic stimulants. The first is uh, methalone, then there's mephedrone, and then there's another one which is kind of hard to pronounce, uh, methylenedioxyprovalerone, or MDPV. And basically they mix these up with other stimulants and put it in a concoction, and there's no way to know how much you're taking at that time. So it's probably, this guy was on one of these things, none of which is, is LSD. And so all three of these ingredients have recently been listed as controlled substances, and there's a legislation in place to make them illegal, so possession of them would become illegal. Interestingly enough, these were all, uh, two of them were, were, um, were invented back in the 60s. One of them was in 1929. So these chemicals have been around for a while, and I, I tried to do some research uh, to find out who exactly invented them or who owns the patents now. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that in the time limit that I had. But I suspect that if you go into these, uh, you're going to find drug company ties to them. So pretty interesting enough. But now we have cannibal zombies running around after they take bath salts. Very weird world we live in. Let's move on. Kurt Nimmo writes, President Romney, Secretary of State Lieberman, and War Against Iran. And this is an article that talks about who Bolton or uh, who Mc Romney is going to pick as his uh, Secretary of War, um, and it could be uh, it could be Lieberman or it could be who's the other guy John Bolton. Those are the other two. So you know if those guys if if uh, Romney wins, you know those two are going to be both pushing for a war with Iran. And we all know Obama is a war president, so we all know he's going to go to war with Iran if he wins. We know they're both supported by Bain Capital, which is Romney's old boss. And it, it, it really it really gets me mad that I have people out there, I see them with their little signs in their cars, vote for Romney, vote for Obama. And people are so stupid that they believe in this two-party system. Guess what, people? The puppet master's got two hands. Up one rear is Obama and up the other is Romney. And they're going to tell you whatever they want. And you're stupid and you're going to buy it. It pisses me off. It really pisses me off that we're still talking about this stuff and we don't realize that it's a left-right paradigm. They're two wrestlers. They're owned by the same puppet master. Get that through your thick skulls. 
Don't vote for your president. Don't vote for either one of them. Tear off your bumper stickers, throw your signs away, and stop supporting the system. Or all we're going to have is more wars, and more of your children are going to die, and all our taxes are going to get raised to pay for this globalist banker scum. Just looking at this article really pisses me off. You know why? Because it's all a show. and We're all part of it, and we all need to wake up and grow up and start talking about who the real people are out there. Moving on, escape from New York. High taxes, high taxing Empire State loses 3.4 million residents in 10 years. New York State accounted for the biggest migration exodus of any state in the nation between 2000 and 2010, with 3.4 million residents leaving over that period, according to the Tax Foundation, representing a loss of $45.6 in income. They found that more than 600,000 residents have moved to Florida over the decade, opting perhaps for the Sunshine State's more lenient tax system, taking nearly $20 billion in adjusted growth income with them. Is that a surprise? When you raise taxes, people leave. That's why people are leaving this country. That's why he had one of the founders of Facebook moving overseas. You know, he says he's going to pay his taxes, but, you know, the reason they're leaving is because of the tax system. But guess what? If you're part of the United Nations, you don't have to pay taxes. And here we go from the, to The Guardian. Christine Lagarde, scourge of tax evaders, pays no taxes. And this is right after she's coming out and telling the Greeks to pay your taxes, even though... <laughs> She doesn't pay any. And the same applies to nearly all United Nations employees. In fact, Article 34 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations of 1961, which has been signed by 180 state, 187 states, declares a diplomatic agent shall be exempt from all dues and taxes, personal or real, which is, I like that, or real, national, regional, or municipal. Okay? So the people who work for the United Nations or any of these other giant world bank funds don't pay any taxes on their income. Guess how much she makes? As an off official of an international institution, her salary is $467,940 a year, plus another $83,000 in additional for um, additional allowances that aren't subject to any taxes, okay? So she's telling the stupid slaves to pay their taxes. She doesn't pay a damn thing. That's how the system works, people. Let's go to the quote of the day from Will Durant. This is from the story of civilization. Civilization begins with order, grows with liberty, and dies with chaos. Kind of reminds me of a, the movie Revenge of the Nerds where they were contemplating, would you like to be living at the ascendancy of a civilization or the descendancy? Okay, we're on the descendancy right now, people. And if you don't believe it, look around you. That's why we have face-eating cannibals running around naked in Miami. Okay, because our civilization is declining. We're going to go to that Jim Tucker interview. And that will be all for the news today. Stay tuned uh, tomorrow with more Bilderberg uh, updates. If, um, if you're not doing anything right now, check out the Prison Planet, Planet I'm sorry, check out the Planet InfoWars site uh, with the Bilderberg Meetup Group, or you can check out our site on InfoWars.com, our article that's going to have all the live updates, all the links, everything you need to stay informed while we're out there at Bilderberg. Everything you need to know. And with that, I will say good night. I will see you guys next time I host the news. Hopefully I'll be a little calmer, but I'm a little pissed off. I had a lot of time to think about things over the weekend. <sighs> That's all for tonight. I'm Rob Dew, and this is the InfoWars Nightly News. My name is Jim Tucker. We're at St. Marie. Switzerland for the uh, Bilderberg meeting. Well, this year, uh, Bilderberg is strongly committed to uh, expanding the war with the invasion of Egypt so they could uh, have a big war. They use the term big war a lot in the Middle, Middle East because that, that will generate profits. Uh, they want them all involved in a, a big war. Right. They, uh, they want a, a war throughout the Middle East uh, with the exception of Israel. And as I said, there's big profits to be made from uh, war. Because when you go to war, you're making tanks, airplanes, uh, trucks, jeeps, and all kinds of war materials, which uh, 
is profitable in its own way. And then the war profiteering kicks in, as it has in all of our wars, uh, where other big bucks are made on top of the big bucks. Uh, <clears throat> yes, as I've said before, the uh, page one story in the Financial Times, uh, one hour speech delivered by uh, Secretary of War Robert, uh, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, calling for bigger NATO involvement in uh, combat missions, uh, more uh, NATO support uh, for the uh, wars in the Middle East, uh, very uh, rough sounding one hour speech. It, uh, it appeared on page one of the Financial Times, and Financial Times has been attending Bilderberg meetings for decades, and so they keep the promises. So they identified, uh, they said he simply spoke to a private group of uh, luminaries or something to that effect. I've got the clipping here. Uh, it did not say Bilderberg. The, uh, he de de delivered the speech to a private uh, meeting of financial uh, uh, leaders or consultants or some such uh, variation without identifying as Bilderberg. Well, my source said that was exactly the speech he gave because he was inside there listening to it. Uh, maybe got a text. And he said, you can depend on uh, use quotes around wherever he is uh, put it directly. You can quote him directly. The rest of the story is uh, complete and accurate also. So go ahead and have fun. They intended that to be message get out uh, in a way that would not uh, be traced back to Bilderberg. It was kind of silly for them to think they could do that. Every American, whether he's a civilian shyster or public official is committing a, a criminal act by simply being here under the Logan Act. The Logan Act passed shortly after our country was established, 1787, I believe. And it uh, makes it a crime for public officials to meet with private citizens to make pu public policy behind closed doors. They can do it in the open, uh, where everybody can observe and question, but they cannot do it behind closed doors. The apologists would say, well, that Logan Act was so, lo so long ago. Two answers. First of all, if it was passed by the Congress and never repealed, it is still the law of the land. And to the apologists who worry about it being so old, as if that mattered, I'll point out to them that it's been amended and expanded and strengthened several times by Congress over the years, including deep into the 20th century, they've added and expanded the Logan Act. So they're criminals when they attend and they uh, should be prosecuted. Is Robert Gates himself worried about that? I don't think they're worried at all because nobody ever challenges them except for, well, they're worried a little bit more now because uh, of uh, the great Ron Paul in Congress. Jim, about the wars, so many countries in the Middle East, dozens of them have had protests and riots and coups and destabilization. Has Bilderberg been behind most or all of that or, or what do you know? Uh, it has been promoted and uh, of course the President of the United States uh, is always controlled by Bilderberg and they have members of the high officials of the White House attending the meetings for the purpose of getting their, their instructions. So uh, yes, there's a big involvement. We've seen some dramatic departures such as uh, Bill Clinton, who attended Bilderberg as the obscure governor of Arkansas, is elected president the following year. Uh, George H.W. Bush had been a trilateral commission participant, and uh, he had promised in his campaign for election not to, re uh, not to raise taxes. He said he was in favor of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which has first been proposed by my publisher, and has since become law. Then Bilderberg ordered him to raise taxes. So he raised taxes and lost the election for uh, breaking a very solemn campaign uh, pledge. But Bill Clinton was uh, right there. It is under Bill Clinton that NATO became the standing army of the world, of, of the uh, United Nations. He invaded Kosovo. Clinton was the most bloody-handed draft dodger to ever disgrace the White House with his presence. And I've mentioned his good points. I've not gotten critical yet. Uh, so we attacked Kosovo, killed thousands of people. 
We have zero casualties in that brief war. Americans love a brief war when we don't have any casualties. The reason we didn't have casualties is our planes flew so high out of range of the missiles on the ground that they could not target uh, their bombs. So we bombed a bridge, killing uh, a lot of school children on a school bus on the bridge. We uh, bombed a McDonald's and killed some more. A lot of innocent dead civilians, uh, little children, mamas, daddies. And to go to bed each night with that blood on your hands, must I don't see how they can do it, except the Bilderberg rationale for wars is we need the population control. They're now yelling that we'll run out of Earth in 30 years. We've got to control the population. Well, one way to control the population is for young men to die in wars. Is Henry Kissinger ashamed or afraid that he has to skirt every country he visits and uh, sneakily enter and exit all the time, at it, given his age and uh, acumen? I suspect with his ego, uh, he's proud of it. But he's a very affected character. Uh, uh, one time, a few years ago, I walked up to him at some kind of reception and said, uh, Dr. Kissinger, you're at the Bilderberg meeting named the time, space, so forth. Uh, and this long, white-haired guy said this to you, but I couldn't quite hear your answer. He said, that was a private meeting. Then he called himself, have to affect the German accent, that was a private meeting. Uh, too late, though, I caught him on that. His, he's been here since he was 14 years old, fled Germany uh, under uh, uh, when the Third Reich was being established. Uh, his brother, whom I've never met, but people who know him, says his brother speaks uh, English like a native, uh, but he affects that uh, uh, accent for some, for some ego reason, and he's always been Dr. Kissinger. Well, David Rockefeller also has an economic uh, doctorate from uh, one of those uh, snob schools, but he's Mr. Rockefeller. He's not Dr. Rockefeller. Jim, can you talk uh, about how long you've been covering uh, Bilderberg, and what do you think about all the young patriots who are now confronting them wherever they go? It's wonderful. I first started chasing them in 1975. Well, physically, in about 1980, we had reporters working on it before, but I couldn't, wasn't satisfied there for, with their work, so I did it myself. I signed myself to cover Bilderberg. Uh, yes, it's gotten better every year uh, because when I first started covering those kids, I'd be the only guy there. They always had a low-key story in the smallest local newspaper, preferably a weekly, in whatever town they were in, to explain that these nice guys are meeting, called to let the public understand that even though this place is sealed off by armed guards, it's only good people doing good work. When Bilderberg uh, has a meeting, there's a, a big publicized uh, economic meeting of some sort uh, over an easy plane ride, helicopter ride. So that's their cover story. They were uh, in town that weekend for this big uh, meeting of financial ministers. And then they came home. Well, before coming home, they go to uh, Bilderberg on uh, Friday night and leave on uh, Monday morning. But that covers, covers their butts as far as being out of Washington or out of uh, Paris or whatever. I first started chasing them in 1975. Well, physically, in about 1980, we had reporters working on it before, but I couldn't, wasn't satisfied there for, with their work, so I did it myself. I signed myself to cover Bilderberg. Uh, yes, it's gotten better every year, uh, because when I first started covering those kids, I'd be the only guy there. They always had a low-key story in the smallest local newspaper, preferably a weekly, in whatever town they were in, to explain that these nice guys are meeting, called to let the public understand that even though this place is sealed off by armed guards, it's only good people doing good work. So I think it was at Helsinki. We had uh, learned about the Bilderberg location quite early that year in November. Our subscribers uh, in Europe, and there's very few of them, uh, it cost so much to subscribe with the uh, air mail and all the uh, postage rates, uh, long distance postage rates. So there's a tendency for 
uh, 10 people or 20 people to uh, contribute to the subscription and then share the paper. And one of them wrote back, this is before the age of the internet, it was a matter of just regular mail service, a letter saying, should we alert the local media? Well, I kicked myself in the butt 15 times. I should have thought about that years ago. And the answer was yes. So it was a lot of fun. We got to uh, the airport in uh, Copenhagen, or I think it was, and they're getting off the air airplane to jump in their long black limousines with the police escorts for an ego trip to the resort about 20 miles away. And some are uh, take the uh, helicopter. But as they get off the plane to head for their uh, limousines or helicopters, they're greeted by a throng of uh, reporters, uh, print reporters and broadcasters, lights flashing, and to see the, the terror in their eyes was just a lot of fun, how shocked they were to uh, confront the media that way. And then it started making it bigger in the newspapers. I mean, the uh, top paper in Paris, the top papers in London had heavy and good stories raising the question, why, why are there, uh, these distinguished people having such a secret meeting? So in every year since then, our lasses in the circulation department would print out a, a list of all of our subscribers within a 200 mile radius and they get a letter uh, asking, to, uh, asking them to alert the local media about Bilderberg. And every year it gets bigger and better. More young people are becoming aware. Uh, older patriots too. Can you also talk about uh, two things that happened this year at the same time? The host country challenged their right to meet in the way <laughs> they do. And we yesterday they filmed actual members walking outside the grounds, which you say has never happened. Can you talk about those two points. Uh, yes, the uh, meeting out, walking outside the grounds, I think, uh, for the first time ever. Always before, once they get behind the, the saw horses and armed guards, they stay inside. Uh, oh, they walk around on some grounds that are far, far away, uh, but none where you could actually speak to them and they, they could hear you. I think they probably decide that we need to reassure, since we've had all this horrible publicity, and big newspapers and little newspapers and big and little, small broadcasters give it such heavy attention, uh, we better make some move. So we'll walk to this place and we'll smile at them. If they ask a question, if we could give them a, sweet, a sweetheart answer, we'll respond graciously. If not, we will be unable to hear the question and be sorry, maybe a little wave. So I th think that was a another case of them being forced to do something they would not normally do to confront the fact that there's so, such increasing public awareness that a lot of them are in great political danger or even big building. Already we've seen leading members of Congress used to always attend the Speaker of the House of uh, Representatives, ranking senators uh, would attend. Now they don't dare because they get mail from their own constituents. Their own, uh, voters in their own congressional district are in their st home state for the senators. Saying if you uh, do business with uh, these criminals in anymore, we'll never vote for you again. We'll vote for anybody else. And they've been politically frightened out of the ball game. They're already long gone. And more, I think more are feeling very hesitant, uh, very eager to cover their butts when they come to Bilderberg, like uh, Secretary of Defense not being on the list when the Secretary of Defense always attends Bilderberg from the United States, along with the Secretary of Treasury, who's here, and uh, Secretary of Commerce, other high officials of the administration. I'll tell you, I had the pleasure of uh, talking to Kenneth Clark one time when he was in Washington, uh, he thought he was going to hold a press conference to discuss, I forgot, some international issue. I'm there and I asked the first question. I said, uh, Mr. Clark, you attended the Bilderberg meeting. I named, had notes in front of me, named the dates, the exact location and the exact town and country on uh, these dates. Can you tell us uh, what transpired? The other reporters from the New York Times, of course, never heard of Bilderberg, uh, but they're real interested in this. Uh, Kenneth Clark's face goes uh, blank. He fumbles around a little bit. 
They started asking questions. I remember him saying, uh, yes, we should have a world government. Uh, we will have, uh, this goes back a few years, of course, when they were real optimistic. Uh, we will have uh, a, Europe, a complete European Union, uh, a common currency. They were, then they will have the American Union, and your common currency will be the Mario. Then we'll have the Asian Pacific Union, and they'll have a common currency. And our grandchildren are going to laugh about the uh, uh, days when we had all these petty little currencies. Yeah. We have to have a world government so you have peace and all that jazz.